Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we'll be learning how to use gradients. The gradient tools in Adobe Animate can be hard to find, but they're actually quite simple to use. In today's video, we'll first look at how to create a gradient, and then I'll show you how to fine tune your gradient using the gradient transform tool. To keep this video short, I'm assuming that you're already familiar with basic Adobe Animate stuff like the paint bucket, the classic brush, and how to use the properties panel. If you're not, I recommend watching my first Adobe Animate Basics video before continuing on this one. I'll leave a link in the description and also top right. And with that said, let's go straight into Adobe Animate. I'll quickly use the classic brush to draw a shape on the stage. And we're going to create our first gradient inside this shape. To create a gradient, we first need to open the color panel which you can access by going up to window and selecting color, which is over here, or you can click on its icon in the toolbar. We'll be using the color panel a lot today, so I'm going to drag it right out of the toolbar for easy access. Now here at the top of the color panel, you see two colors. The one on top with the paint bucket icon is the fill color, and the one below it with the pencil icon is stroke color. Keep in mind that you can use gradients with both fill and stroke colors, but for today's tutorial, we'll keep things simple and stick to fill color. So making sure that fill color is selected, clicking on this drop down menu will bring up a bunch of options, including two gradients. Let's start by selecting linear gradient, which basically means a gradient along a straight line. With that selected, we now have a black and white linear gradient here in the fill color you'll notice that nothing has changed on stage. But if I select the paint bucket and click within the shape, it fills the shape with our new gradient. And if you need a little more control, clicking and dragging with the paint bucket will let you adjust the direction and the strength of your gradient. Now let's talk about colors. Selecting your gradient with the selection tool and going back to the color panel, take a look at this bar near the bottom. At the moment, our gradient consists of two colors, black and white, as shown by these two icons underneath the bar. Double clicking either of these icons will let you pick a color using the color swatches, the hex code, or the color picker. If you wanted to, you could even change the opacity of each color. Let's go with a nice salmon pink for this one and change the other color to a light blue. You can also add more colors to your gradient by clicking anywhere along this bar, which will create a new icon that you can then double click and adjust as we did before. We'll pick a yellow this time. And you can see that we now have a beautiful, wonderful three color gradient. You can add as many colors as you want. And when you want to remove a color, simply drag its icon out of the color panel. And speaking of dragging, you can also drag icons along the bar to adjust how much of each color is shown and the placement of each color, as you can see on the stage. And that covers the basics of linear gradients. You can, however, get even more control by using the gradient transform tool. This is hidden beneath the free transform tool here at the top left of the toolbar. You need to right click the free transform tool and then select gradient transform tool from the menu that pops up or use the keyboard shortcut F. With the gradient transform tool selected, you can see that we now have more controls around our gradient. This handle in the corner lets you rotate the gradient around its center point and we can drag the center point to reposition it. The parallel lines represent the start and the end points of the gradient in this case, this will represent this bit over here, the salmon pink start, and down here we would have the blue. Let's move this center point a bit so you can see. There we are, blue, blue, blue. The start and end points can be adjusted by dragging this arrow icon, and notice how our gradient always sits entirely within these two lines. Everything beyond the lines is just a solid color. It's also worth pointing out that the gradient center point isn't restricted to the shape. For example, I could drag the center point outside of the shape and then 
adjust the start and end points and maybe rotate it a little to give it a different kind of look. That's kind of nice. Looks like a sunset. Moving on, let's take a quick look at radial gradients. Besides its circular shape, radial gradients are very similar to linear gradients. The steps to create a radial gradient are the same. Open the color panel, select radial gradient from the drop down menu, pick your colors, then switch to the paint bucket and click within the shape that you want to fill. We can also adjust the radial gradient using the gradient transform tool with some minor differences. Dragging the center point repositions the gradient as expected, but this time there are three icons. This first arrow icon, which is connected to this blue line, stretches the gradient, whereas the second arrow icon scales the entire gradient proportionally. This last icon will rotate the gradient around the center point. And that's it. You're now a gradient expert. Thank you as always for watching. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, feedback, if there's a topic you want me to cover. Otherwise, thank you. Goodbye. See you next time. Ta-ta. Ha-la-la-la-la. -la -la -la.